Last February, I spent the whole month talking about Michael Finlay's deranged and compelling roughies that he made in the 60s with his wife, Roberta Finlay, and I mentioned that Roberta continued to make films after she left Michael. Uh, so let's take a look at one of them. Uh, you might like it. Especially if you're the kind of person who ever watched an Abel Ferreira film like Driller Killer or Miss 45 and thought, you know, this movie would work even better if it was a bit more mean-spirited, a little grimier, and way sleazier. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at Roberta Finlay's Tenement from 1985. It was also released under the title Game of Survival, so you might know it as that. Either way, we open in the Bronx in August at 11.05 in the AM. And oh rats, some hoodlums are hanging out in the cellar. Oh hey, check it out, that's Paul Calderon. You might remember him as the barkeeper in Pulp Fiction, or Going back to Abel Ferreira, you might remember him from Abel Ferreira's King of New York. Tenement is his film debut. A resident of the Tenement building snitches on the ne'er-do-wells in the cellar, and the police arrive and haul them all off to jail. Uh, the snitch is pretty proud of himself, but uh, you know what they say about snitches. The tenants decide to have a party to celebrate the gang's removal, and we get to know a few of them. We've got an old blind guy who speaks Spanish to his dog. Está bien, bambo. Está bien. A man who wants nothing to do with his neighbors. And a lady who turns tricks for her junky boyfriend. Ah, sometimes there are those movies that make you miss your mom. Well, as the tenants party, the gang is released from jail, and they quickly score some drugs, and oh hey, check it out, that guy with the uh, nose necklace thing, uh, that's Dan Snow, us Toxic Avenger fans remember him as Cigar Face. <laughs> Pretty cool. After the gang has done enough drugs to get good ideas about how they want to spend their lives, they decide they're going to retake the building and kill everyone inside. <laughs> Here we go. Bambo the dog gets it first. And then things get nasty. The gang grabs one of the residents and first does a little slice and dice and then one of the gang members takes out his um, uh, member, uh, but she fights back. But again, no good deed goes unpunished. Rudy, get the broom! Get the broom, bro! Get the broom! Stop! Fucking legs, man. I ram it in there, baby. Come on, ram it in there. The daughter goes for help, and when the tenants are all together, the gang leader screams up at them. The building is his, and they are going to die. And this will be the rest of the movie. The gang will slowly make their way up the stairs, killing people as they find them, and the people will defend themselves, uh, killing gang members when they can. Hell, even the junkie will have his turn, and he tricks one of the gang members into a hot shot. <laughs> nice. Eventually, the tenants are going to run out of places to hide, but hopefully by then, the number of gang members will be reduced to a manageable amount. Hopefully. But that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, the characters here are great. Uh, they're caricatures, sure, but they're also uh, realistic and somehow compelling. We have an old Jewish woman who's been in the building for years. We have a single mom who wants a better life for her and her child. And we've got a hooker turning tricks for her junkie boyfriend. Sounds like home. I know these people. <laughs> Roberta Finlay did too. She said the film is a revisualization of her own childhood. Also, gotta give it up to the violence. There are some shocking displays of brutality here. Sure, it's low budget violence, but it's effective. It's not horror film gory, but uh, it is visceral. Must be all that viscera. I mean, after all, this film was rated X by the MPAA for its violence alone. There's very little nudity in this film, uh, but there is some, which is nice. Uh, but, you know, this film earned that X with blood. Hmm, <laughs> nice. And the film was outright rejected for release in the UK. <laughs> Man, those Brits with their video nasties. What a bunch of... 
Anyway, and it's not just the violence. This film is sadistic even beyond its violence. Like when the gang trashes the old Jewish woman's apartment. Nah, that's just mean. But the film's not perfect. Like a working girl hooking for her boyfriend's next hit, it has some shortcomings. Well, I didn't quite buy the gang leader as the leader of the gang. He's a bit too pretty with that well-coiffed hair and smooth chest. I, I wasn't sure whether I should be afraid of him or want to lick him. Plus, he's a bit of a short stack. How did he get to be the boss? He's cruel, I mean, that's for sure, but as far as, like, psychopaths go, Hector is the standout one here. I mean, he wears that dog's blood like war paint throughout the film. I mean, it's not like he didn't have access to a towel inside an apartment building. He must have just liked it. Hmm, I guess I should have included dog blood war paint in the highlights. Well, back to the shortcomings. Some of the acting here is, well, well you know, it's subpar, and the effects are obviously pretty cheap, but... This is a pretty cheap movie, uh, subpar acting and cheap looking effects, eh, what do you expect? Beyond that, there will be some times when the characters do things that are, you know, really rather stupid, that puts themselves in danger or even gets them killed, and I know some people are bothered by this kind of stuff in movies. Uh, it never really bothers me at all. I mean, have you ever hung out with people? They're f***ing morons. Bad decision making in a crisis? Uh, that just seems like realism to me. Overall, this is a really cool movie. I'm a big fan. Uh, more people, way more people should know about it. Uh, check it out. Uh, this really is an overlooked gem. Which, I guess, is kind of the theme of my YouTube channel.